Welcome to Wisconsin, everybody. I'm Trevor. Tonight, we've got Nito Finito and local supergroup, The Flavor That Kills. Excuse me, I've got a little bit of a cold, so... Well, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have some cough syrup in my jacket if you want any. Well, I got a bag full of drops and going through them like candy, so... I think my cough syrup will work a little bit better than that. <laughs> <laughs> I was the salesman. Uh, yep. I'm Eric. Ryan Corcoran. <laughs> Hi, I'm Emery. I'm Christian. So, you guys are called The Flavor That Kills. Why did you pick that name? Well... Should I answer that, Ryan? Do you want you want to answer that? Cause no, I it, think Emery should answer it. Yeah, Emery was really the, kind of the genius behind the name. Well, I, yeah, I just listened to Christian here. Christian came up with that spelling of the name, so I think he should. Well, we used to have a project called "The Labor That Kills," and a friend of mine said, "Wouldn't it be funny if you were called the Flavor That Kills?" And Christian texted that name over to me, and I Googled it because you know, you come with a band name. He figured there's like 50 <clears> other bands that have that name, and the first thing that popped up was this article about MSG, and I was like, perfect. The, the That's what we sound case, like, right? yeah. This is a unique band that I've been in. I mean, uh, we do, the way we write stuff's a little different, which I think is really cool. Yeah, that's what this Because it starts with the rhythm section most of the, most of the time, which is Christian and I. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, the engine room. Right. I think the most important thing is that I took away most of Eric's drums. We got rid of his uh, <laughs> cymbals. We got rid of his toms. And now we can really hear the kick and snare very well. That's, I think, the greatest leap forward we have made is enhancing your sound yeah. by reducing the amount of equipment yeah. that you have to set up. So let's talk about your songs. What's the first song that you guys are going to play? I don't oh. know what we're going to play first. What do you think we should oh, play first? Oh, we could play Glory Hole. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds promising. <laughs> well, you know, uh, yeah, it's, it is, it's a great song. I don't know who came up with the title. Probably Ryan. It was. No, it was you. They became roommates last summer, and part of the agreement, Eric was really dead set on having a glory, a glory hole, hole put in the bedroom. Yeah, it was, it was a really great idea. Complete with a doorbell. <laughs> yeah, right, you know. yeah, it's going to ring the bell and I have to go up to the glory it hole. Didn't work. <laughs> when you can't pay for rent, you've got to pay with what you've got. Right. It right. didn't work. Well, it it didn't work with by paying anyway. rent. <laughs> <laughs>
The song is entitled, We're on TV in Madison. Yeah, we're back on track. 
I'm Joe. Eric. Aaron. <laughs> you guys are called Nito Finito. Why did you pick that name? We don't talk we about that. Uh, <laughs> All right, no, so. No, sorry, man. Might as well just yeah. call yourselves Fight Club then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your origin story? How did you guys all come together as a band? <laughs> There's a lot of coffee yeah. in there. Aaron, involved. Mike, and yeah, myself. Aaron uh, worked at a Mike. coffee shop, okay? Yeah. But I met Joe at a different coffee shop. <laughs> But I met those two at he an open mic. He came to the mic. coffee shop I worked And at. he came to the coffee shop he worked at. So we kind of like <laughs> met everybody all at the coffee. Caleb here, he just makes a mean cup of coffee. So we <laughs> stopped going to the coffee <laughs> shops and started making music. So do you guys have any crazy stories from shows that you've played? <laughs> uh, well, last Today time. we were taking a tallying account of all the injuries that we, we were like sitting uh, out the trailer yeah. like, yeah. who's gotten really fucked up off of this band? <laughs> and it was like, he took a biff on some, some yeah, ice. Yeah, I... I yeah. Carrying a speaker and pl- bless his heart, he didn't drop the speaker. He just took it to the <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> took it to the just, So I played that show with like a just a hand that could barely close, swollen. And then I, I did a backflip once at House of Rock and Eau Claire <laughs> off the stage, and I broke my foot and cut it severely. But I didn't want to tell anybody, Finish so I just climbed back up on stage, and I'm just like gushing blood Kill Bill style. It's like on my foot, and I just played the whole show out and finished it, and then and he landed the flip. Oh, yeah, that ended the flip, definitely. Nice. Yep. Best I give up, take one. been in the Madison music scene for a long time from uh, Home Machine, Awesome Car, Fun Maker, Screaming Sin Sin, and The Ponds. How do you feel about the Madison music scene today versus, I don't know, like 10 years ago? I've been in Madison for 20 years, and it, mm-hmm. it, it has a, it's always had a great music scene. I, you know, it's, with the university, it's kind of uh, recycles itself every five mm-hmm. or six years, you know. You have people that come to school here, come here for whatever reasons. They start bands, some bands stick around. 
Um, but you know, I think the bands that are around now are just as good as some of the bands that were around back then. You have to get out and see all the new bands. You got to kind of get out there and figure out who they are and who who you like yeah. and who you get along with. In I, 2003, social media was completely different. I mean, I think that was like the age of Friendster. Still, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I like, think MySpace like the was uh, of MySpace. Yeah. yeah. Oh three, like oh five. It's like there's a ton of print media in town. You had what? Uh, you had Rick's Cafe back then. You had Core yeah. Weekly. Uh, uh, you had Mink. yeah, Max and Mink. The Onion. Like, the Onion. Yeah. So Isthmus, you had yeah. five different periodicals that are spread all over town, where you could read about these bands, but you'd have to go to the show yeah. to actually listen to them, right? Yeah. <clears throat> now it's like, geez, one click. Okay, I know what they sound like. Perfect. That's all I needed. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys. Like I said, been around a while. You've got must have some really great, like crazy stories. Things that have happened to you at your shows. Things that have happened just for being musicians in Madison. Do you have a, Do you have anything that'd be really awesome to share with us? Wow. Well, <laughs> I don't want any pending legal action yeah. against me based <laughs> on things I might say here. Okay, so let's. <laughs> But you know, I, I mean, you know, like when you go on tour and stuff, and you just got three or four or five guys that you're with for like a couple of weeks. I mean, I remember we slept in a motel room once, and we we had to leave because there was heroin spoons underneath our bed, and and we actually sat and debated <clears throat> if we were going to stay or not because we were so tired. And, and, I have a show that yeah. I played in Pittsburgh once. It was right above the club. Some random guy invited us to stay, and. There was a completely empty apartment, and the apartment across the hall was literally burned out, like charred. <laughs> and I woke up, we played with a band from San Francisco, and we all slept on the floor. I woke up with like roaches, like within oh. inches of my face. Woke up and uh, crawled in the van and finished sleeping, so. And uh, we played a pool party once, that was pretty. Oh, yeah, yeah. this band, yeah. we, we, we played a pool party. We've had our own experiences right here in Wisconsin. Yeah. We Our highlight the, was a pool. We on played the west side of Madison the best, right? for yeah. an elder crowd. Yeah, we had people coming up to us during the show asking us which high school we went to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I think we, you know, accommodated them really well. They came up to us and, uh, you know... Oh, yeah, we played do, cover yeah, songs we played for them. cover songs. Yeah. So basically they asked us to play a few Beatles songs and Marvin Gaye and some other stuff. And Ryan would just sing those lyrics over our own songs. But they also Music. wanted us to DJ afterwards, so... We decided that some hardcore rap was really the way to go. <laughs> For some reason or another, they didn't think it was as great as we did, but... Oh, that's right. I really Eric wanted, did not really let that Dr. stop Dre him. Right then. Yeah. He's got... It builds character. Alright, so uh, continuing on, what else are you going to play? You don't have to necessarily do these in order. But, uh, oh, no, I, well, I, I, that's let's fine. Let's do this. Okay. Um, uh, mm,
<laughs> so do you have any any great stories that don't involve grievous bodily harm? Um, oh, I thought that was what made a great story. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's about to make the best stories. Ah, ah, well... Um, tour? Yeah, we went on a 5,000 mile tour. <laughs> the whole reason we set the tour up was because of this festival going on down in Texas called the Outrage Fest. Mm -hmm. And we won an online competition by having our, our, our fans vote for us. Mm -hmm. And we got all the way down there, and the thing was a freaking fiasco, to totally poorly planned. It was organized by, like, a 17-year-old. Uh, yeah. There were yeah. 40, 41 bands were supposed to play that day. They had three giant stages set up in uh, this hall, and the guy 17 who, ended up playing. And we got there, there, and the left stage was yeah. on fire. No, yeah. <laughs> okay. we got the well, bands on stage. We were just throwing punches at each other. Oh, the man. crowd is it, it throwing garbage yeah. cans. On yeah. and, the, and the guy who put it together like ended up locking himself up in like upstairs. With security <laughs> yeah. around. People, people like wanted yeah. to. Like, they're they're about to take the PA system. Yeah. And sooner or later, like everybody realized, nobody, none of the bands are going to get paid. Mm. And they like all, these bands had come from all over the country. Yeah. To, to play here, and like they realized, like Red Jumpsuit Apparatus was there. Oh, yeah. Flyleaf, yeah. Flyleaf was yeah. there, and. These bands are like fighting each other for spots on these stages. Like I literally was standing in front of the stage and I saw one band on the left and one band, one band on the left and one band <laughs> on the right. And the lead singers are like standing there. One guitarist is plugged into a half stack on this side and one guitarist is plugged into a half stack on this side. And the, the singers are like getting ready to d duke it out in the middle of the stage for the right to play <laughs> on the stage. All the big mainline bands, they leave. And their agents are like behind the place being like, you got to come back here. We watch like red jumpsuit apparatuses bus peel out of the parking lot. And, suddenly, <laughs> and then like 25 minutes later, we see it come back around <laughs> the other side. And they pull up and like all the big names played for the fans. Mm. But they did it for free. And then they were going to have us play after red jumpsuit apparatus for 15 minutes.
They call me the fucking rock star. It's all that is true, cause it's all, and it's all the attitude. You can call me rock star. Yeah, you, you know it's true. All of you know that it's true. You can call me rock star. But so are you and you, because it's all in the attitude. My mama told me I'm a rock star. So I do. Because it's all in the attitude Mama told me I'm a 